Dear students, welcome back to Chemical Technology. So, if you are producing 1 ton of anhydrous soap, then we require oil and fat around 1.1 ton. Then the um, sodium hydroxide, which is caustic, 50 percent, we require 0.3 ton. And the sodium silicate to uh, filler, then 6 kg. Then water we require 0.8 tons. Then steam we require 1.5 tons. And generally the plant capacity it will vary from 2 to 15 tons a day for the soap manufacturing. So the process description is as follows. The glyceride which is oil and fat and the catalyst are added at the bottom of hydrolysis tower where high pressure water at 230 to 250 degrees centigrade is passed counter currently to the glycerides. So in this one the high pressure and the temperature it will it will decompose glycerides into the fatty acids and the glycerin. So, 15 to 20 percent glycerin is removed from bottom and fatty acids are the passed to a flash tank to remove excess steam from them. Then crude fatty acids are vacuum distilled out and condensate so as such or it is used for the soap production. The caustic added to fatty acid in high speed mixer and saponification is done comple completely in slow speed blender. Other ingredients are added if necessary in the soap. Then the liquid soap is sent for bar soap or flex drying equipment followed by packaging. The soap industry in India mainly affected by vegetable oil supply and we have imported uh, it to meet demands. Also many plants does not require glycerin that affects economics of the overall process. So here is the continuous process for fatty acid, soap and glycerin. So here we are sending the fat or catalyst. So the fat and catalyst they are blended here. Then it is sent to the um, hydrolyzer. So it is maintained at 230 to 250 degrees centigrade, and the pressure is high. That is 40 to 40 high atmosphere. So that's why it's called as the high pressure of fat splitting. Then hot water is added to uh, um, have the hydrolysis. So the fatty acids will form, and the other stream is the 50 to 20 percent glycerin impurities. Impurities. So they will send to ion exchange to remove the impurities from the fats and also the catalyst. Then the purified glycerin is sent to the triple effect evaporator and then it is to steel and then it is sent to holding tank and it is sold as uh, the 99 percent yellow glycerin for the industrial use. Or the yellow glycerin we can send to the activated charcoal which will make it uh, white or off white color glycerin. Then it is filter and we get 99 percent white glycerin uh, and the yield will yield around this process will be 30 to 35 kg ton of soap, uh, 30 to 35 kg per ton of soap. So here the two rates we get either is yellow or we, we can have the white glycerin. Then what are the fatty acids which are uh, this which sent to the flash evaporator where the water is separated and then it is sent to the high vacuum still where waste is separated. Then the fatty acids which are sent to holding tank, so we can send fatty acids as such or we can have them for the manufacturing of the soap. So here the fatty acids they send to the mixer where the caustic is added to neutralize and then blending is done to neutralize completely to form the soap. So soap then is chip and it can have the bar stock or it can have the chipping rolls or we can have the spray dryer for the soap powder. Then the detergent manufacturing. So the earlier the fats and alcohols they were uh, fat or the oil they were using for the soap manufacturing. In detergent we can have the uh, fatty alcohols mainly to prepare the detergents. So sulfated fatty alcohols they have high molecular weight alcohols. They will uh, mainly vary from C12 to C18. They are derived from coconut oil by either sodium reduction or catalytic hydrogenation. <coughs> and the sulfation of these alcohols then follows. The first one in this process will be catalytic hydrogenation of coconut oil. So it is done at high temperature around 200 to 300 degrees centigrade and a high pressure which is 100 to 200 atmosphere using copper salt as catalyst. With hydrogenation saturation of double bond also occurs which is not desired, desirable for detergency. The next step will be sodium reduction of coconut oil. So the molten sodium is added slowly to coconut oil with an aliphatic solvent, uh, maybe xylene or toluene, plus esterifying alcohols such as amyl alcohols. 
So this, so here the alcohol with sodium, they will give the sodium salt, or they are reduced to get the saturated um, triglycerides, which we can make uh, as a fatty alcohols. Then after the reaction is complete, completed, the batch is pumped to water tank where the mixer settles into three layers. The top layer will have high molecular weight alcohols. The middle is gener regenerated reducing alcohol. Then the bottom caustic soda and glycerin for the recovery. Then in third step, we get the sulfation of fatty alcohols. So first reaction was the reduction. The second uh, will produce the fatty alcohols and third will produce the sulfate from the fatty alcohols. So for that one, we have to react fatty alcohols with oleum or excess of 98% sulfuric acid, then purified alcohols, then acid sulfate then converted to sodium salt, excess sulfuric is neutralized by the sodium hydroxide. So here the alcohols with sulfuric acid we get the sulfates which we can neutralize to form the uh, detergent which is uh, here in this case is the anionic detergent. Then alkyl aryl sulfonates, it is prepared in three steps using petroleum raw materials. So kerosene field stock may be fractionated by molecular sieve process in vapor phase. So here is the concept of molecular sieve, so that we will see. So the molecular sieves adsorbents are synthetic zeolites of control pore size such that uh, normal paraffins are absorbed internally, but isoparaffins and cyclic hydrocarbons are not absorbed. So only the normal paraffins which is straight chain, they will be absorbed internally, whereas the branch chain they will not be absorbed. And whatever they adsorb uh, the straight chain, they can be dissolved to the normal paraffins, which are easily biodegradable. And it's a cheaper way to fraction, uh, cheaper way to fractional distillation. So the normal from the branch we can separate by using the molecular sieves. The main reason to not have the branch chain because the branch chain they will have the less biodegradability. So to have the more biodegradability, we should have the straight chain fatty alcohols and that will lead the straight chain the detergents. So here we can see the reaction, the paraffin, when that will chloride, we will give the alkyl chlorides, then alkyl chlorides with the compounds, the cyclic compounds in the presence of aluminum chloride catalyst which will yield the, <coughs> the aromatic compounds and then they are reacted with the sulfates, will give the aromatic sulfates. So here the aryl benzene sulfonate that is ABS will get over here. So the aromatic uh, rings we can have the alkyl, uh, the benzene sulfur. So here the group which is attached over here, it will be fatty in nature and that will uh, lead to the detergency of the uh, detergent. So here the one example will be alkyl benzene sulfonate or linear alkyl benzene sulfonate when this chain is linear one. Then the soap and detergents we can make by alkyl benzene plus oleum to get alkyl benzene sulfonate or tallow fatty alcohol with oleum to yield fatty alcohol sulfate or the sulfonate plus sulfate and NOH to yield the sodium salts which is neutralized over here and the sodium top builder, builders for the detergent action. And to make soap we have the tallow, then we can have the fat, then tallow fatty acid will neutralize, give the sodium salts and the source of fatty acid plus builders we get the final soap production. And also with the ethylene polymerization of ziegler catalyst, we can have the straight chain alcohols which can sulfate to alcohol sulfates or the alpha olefins. Reaction with benzene, we can have the straight chain benzene alkylates or with the sulfonation, we can have the alkyl sulfonates. Or we can have the raw material from the petroleum industry which is purified in molecular cells to yield the straight chain paraffins which can chlorinate and then reaction with benzene to yield straight chain benzene alkylates or we can have the cracking uh, to get the uh, lower molecular weight. So the al alpha olefins we can either react with benzene to get straight chain benzyl alkylates or sulfonate to give the alkane sulfonates or we can have the gamma ray sulfonation to yield alkane sulfonates in this case. The economies if you see then India has the second largest market after US then detergent markets characterized by the presence of large unorganized sector which is specialized in low cost washing products, then manufacture of laundry soaps is reserved for small scale industry, then the main raw material for uh, our soda ash and linear alkyl benzene sulfonate that is labs, and the labs is the primary active ingredient in the detergent. Then alpha olefin sulfonate that is AOS is costlier substitute for the labs, 
and is primarily imported. In the for decades, the sodium triphosphate has used as a builder in detergents. However, the phosphate-free environment-friendly detergents have recently made an entry in Indian market. So generally, nowadays, the detergents which, which we are getting, they are the straight uh, chain detergents to have the more biodegradability. Next important product of the soap and detergent industry is the glycerin. So glycerin usually is the byproduct, but glycerin has the economic value as the many products we are forming uh, by using the glycerin as the raw products. So it has a molecular weight of 92.1, then melting point around 17.9 degree centigrade, then boiling point 290 degree centigrade. It is completely miscible in water and alcohols. Then uh, we have the yellow distilled uh, glycerin for industrial and explosive use, or we can have the 95 to 98 colorless purified for human consumption. In the consumption pattern, if you see, then uh, alkyl resins and plastic will use 35 percent, tobacco humidification 15 percent, then cellophane plastic 12 percent, explosive 10 percent, food and pharmaceutical will use 10 percent of the glycerin. Then if you see the methods of manufacturing of glycerin, the natural products triglyceride hydrolysis is in uh, soap manufacturing. So we have seen earlier in soap manufacturing, so the fatty acid and glycerin will come. So the in this case glycerin which is sent to the triple effect evaporators and we can get the crude glycerin where we can send them as a yellow or we can uh, pass through the charcoal to have the white grade glycerin for the um, human food, uh, human consumption. Then we can have the synthetic glycerin from propylene, which is petrochemical processing. So here we can have the allyl chloride root or we can have the acrylene root. The acrylene root uh, produces acetone um, as a crow product. So here generally the glycerin from uh, the uh, soap industry is the cheaper than the petrochemical. So majority of the glycerin produced is comes from the uh, byproduct of the sodium manufacturing. But the problem here is uh, uh, the glycerin we have to um, get in very pure form from, uh, form from here, whereas glycerin produced from the synthetic root will have the more purer form. So byproducts of uh, soap and fatty acid. So the aloe glycerin, which is sweet water, is put through successive beds of anion and cation exchange. So in anion and cation exchange, the impurities, impurity ion will be adds up and uh, we get the pure uh, glycerin and resins to remove the color and dissolve salt in it. The liquid is concentrated in triple effect evaporated. Then the vacuum distilled to produce industrial grade 99 percent yellow glycerin. Then final purification is performed using activated carbon to obtain water white USP grade glycerin. If you see the glycerin via propylene um, allyl chloride uh, root, then the propylene reacted with chlorine to yield allyl chloride at around 400 to 500 degree centigrade. Then chlorhydrine with HOCl will give glycerol dichlorhydrine. Then glycerol dichlorhydrine when reacted with calcium hydroxide it will give the epichlorhydrine. And then epichlorhydrine with NOH and the water it will leave glycerin as a product which is 75 to 80 percent yield and the NaCl uh, a salt in the product mixture. So here the separation of NaCl again becomes a problem in this one. If you go uh, pro propylene via acrylene route, then propylene reacted to give the isopropanol. Then isopropanol when combusted in liquid phase around 120 degree centigrade and put at atmosphere, it will give hydrogen peroxide and acetone. So here acetone is the byproduct. Then CH3, CH, CH2 plus water with uh, oxygen in vapor phase and copper oxide as a catalyst around 350 degrees centigrade and 1 to the atmosphere, it gives the acrolein. And then acrolein, when reacted with the isopropanol in vapor phase in presence of magnesium oxide and zinc oxide uh, catalyst around 400 degrees centigrade, it will give the allyl alcohol and the acetone as a byproduct. And this allyl alcohol and hydroperoxide in aqueous phase and the in presence of catalyst 60 to 70 degree centigrade, it will lead glycerin as the product. Then here if you see the economics, then synthetic versus natural glycerin. So only natural uh, is used in India. 
soap industry produces large scale glycerin raw material which is used for recovery then substitution of detergent to soap may increase supply for synthetic glycerin so here the uh, suppose detergents are uh, more in demand nowadays than the soap because soaps have the limitations in hard water so when we go for detergent, detergent manufacturing then glycerin we get here is the much purer and in good uh, good quantity then if you see the plant statistics soap industries are producing glycerin as a by product and synthetic glycerin with other products becomes economical so alone glycerin production in synthetic way is not economical so generally it is produced with some other products in industry so we have to refer shoes and dryden the next industry we will discuss in models will be sugar and starch industry